the opportunity to set in on Tom Ferry, had a great presentation there, as well as Mike Ferry, his father, and those that's whose notes we're going to be going over today. Now, just a little precursor, Mike Ferry is old school. He does things the way that he's done them and it's worked for him. And so, yes, hello, hello, Gabby, welcome. We're gonna be going over that. So some of these things might be, might be a little rough to take. Again, these are our notes from the class that he instructed. And again, all of it is going to be just fantastic information for you to be able to take with you and implement into your real estate business. Again, we are here to equip you to be the absolute best agents in the Temecula Lake Elsinore Valley. And in order to do that, we've got to, we've got to go to trainings. We've got to continually educate ourselves on how the industry is changing and what best practices we can put into place that is going to allow us and propel us ahead of the competition. So um, some, some fundamentals that, that Mike touched on in the beginning of his talk was the problem, again, he's a little rough. The problem with mankind, he says, is that we don't think. Too often people are just kind of reactionary and not proactive. Reactionary is just kind of making a, making a move based on something that's already happened as opposed to being proactive and thinking something through and then making a move. And we oftentimes in real estate are very reactive. We are not taking our time to really process these things out and set plans in place. I can attest to that as a beginning agent, you know, five years ago when I started, I was just kind of out there doing whatever and not necessarily coming back and kind of planning it out as to how I was going to execute on whatever goal that is that I was going to be part of. Amber Hayes, welcome for joining us as well. Real estate as an industry is not easy. And so if there were some of you here in the room, you know, I'd ask, maybe you can even come in and, why is real estate not easy? Think about that. We're asking questions. We need answers to our questions. One of the reasons why real estate is not easy is because we are in the middle of a buyer and a seller. Now, whenever you're in the middle of two people and you're trying to come to terms, is it easy to be able to get those two individuals on the opposite sides of the table to be able to come to terms? That's absolutely not easy at all. And as real estate agents, we need to be able to competent to be able to bring them to terms together. Asking good questions. Something that you may not know, this is a little bit of fun fact that he shared with us. The average real estate agent is 57 years old. So that means they've been doing this for some time, most likely, and only 6% of agents are 30 years or under. So a large, rather a very small portion of the real estate industry are very young, and a much larger portion of the real estate industry is older. These are just some fun facts that you should know as you're out there doing business as a real estate agent. Is what you're doing, ask yourself this question, is what you're currently doing today going to accelerate your business? And if it is, what is that thing that you're doing today that is going to accelerate your business? Maybe you're coming to work at 10 o'clock in the morning. Maybe this training is the first thing that you're doing today. After this training, you're going to have lunch. After lunch, maybe you're going to prospect for an hour. And then maybe you're going to go on Facebook for an hour and a half. We don't know. Now your kids are home from school. Your day is over, right? That, unfortunately, is the, the habits of many real estate agents today. That hour of prospecting actually taken out, and that's only probably done like once or twice a week. Those are the behaviors of real estate agents today. So it is tremendously hard for us to change our behaviors. And so we're going to talk about some things today and how we can change our behaviors so that you can become a much more successful real estate agent. If you want to make more money, this is what Mike said with it, if you want to make more money, you have to improve the quality of your service. What was that? You have to improve the quality of your service. It's no mystery why 10% of agents list 80 to 90% of all homes. 10% of the agents 
list 80 to 90 percent of all homes those agents provide extremely great quality and service to their clients and they have a wonderful business model which is why they're able to do what they are able to do so we have to ask ourselves how can we attain to those levels last well this year the numbers came in there are 1.3 million agents in the USA 1.3 million agents and did you know 51% did not do one single deal last year 51% didn't do not one single deal last year those that's just a staggering number there we don't want to find ourselves in that 51 percent not at all again this is going to be a little bit of harsh stuff but this is how mike taught and so i'm just going to give it to you again how mike gave it to us when we were there in la the industry is pushing so point number one is you want to write down the industry is pushing for buyers agents zillow is pushing for it extremely all of these i like they're pushing for the buyers agent but the foundation of any industry is a word that begins with I, and it's called inventory. And the skills necessary to work with a seller or a buyer drastically differ. And so you and I have to ask ourselves the question, do I want to be a buyer's agent or a listing agent? It's no mystery why they have the saying that listing agents last, meaning that they, they go a long time, in, they survive a long time in this industry. And we're going to get into some, some, other, um, some other points as to why that is as we continue forward in our training today. Did you know that 75,000 agents buy Zillow leads? They're buying Zillow leads, which is going to be buyers that they're looking to most likely work with buyers but we don't want to be buyers agents that is not the goal of a century 21 preferred agent we're just gonna say it because those agents don't last and we want you to last we want you to have a very successful career in real estate and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to teach you some of that today in regards to being a listing agent now, in order to survive in any industry, you have to commit to something. We cannot get our real estate license, try this out for six months, and then decide, you know, it didn't work. Let me venture on to the next opportunity that may be there. We have to commit. Commit. I'll say it again. Commit to a system of 18 to 24 months to be a strong listing agent. 18 to 24 month commitment. We talked about this the other day at our, um, our sales meeting, and that was that 80% of franchises succeed and 75% of, or maybe, yeah, 75% of small business owners fail. Why is that? Well, there's systems that are in place and there's a commitment to get it done. So we wanna make sure that you're committed and we wanna give you the systems to be able to be successful in real estate. So again, committed 18, 20 more, four months. That's a year and a half to a year worth of, this is what I'm gonna do and this is how I'm going to be successful and executing on that every single day and not having in the back of your mind, well, this is, I have a plan B if I'm gonna fall back on that if this doesn't work out. If I'm thinking in my mind that I have a plan B and I'm gonna fall back on that, I am not focused on whatever that goal is that's in front of me, that plan A. Make sense? I hope so. So, we're gonna to commit to this schedule a listing schedule moving forward. Again, this is, this is about our agents who are out there wanting to get those listings to increase their, their volume and their sales. So how many of you agents watching today want to make more money? It's kind of a no-brainer question. We all want to make more money. In order to make more money, what do we have to do? Right? That's a great question. So, typically, when we look at the different schedules of a listing agent and a buyer's agent, how often or when are buyers most available to go out and look at property? On the weekends. They work during the day. They work during the week, I should say. So they're not able to go out and look at them. So they want you to work on Saturdays. 
They want you to work on Sundays. They want you to work on evenings at the convenience of their schedule. The drastic difference between a, a buyer's schedule and a seller's listing schedule is the fact that you don't work weekends. You more so work on weekdays. So that's the listing schedule that I want to talk to you about as far as organizing and creating that in your planner. If you don't have a planner, I encourage you to get a planner. We're still here in the first quarter of 2020. We should be writing down our schedule. What does our, our week look like every single day? You're not guessing what you're going to do tomorrow. It's already been written down for you. You're just simply executing on what has already been put into place, what's already been written down. Okay? So listing agents find sellers and buyers find agents. Did you notice the difference there? Listing agents find sellers, but buyers find agents. Too often, the buyers are saying, I don't even know why I needed the agent. Because I found them, I found the property, all they did was fill out a little bit of paperwork, right? Completely different mindset from the listing agent when you show up at the door, you're marketing their property, you're going over contracts with them, you're helping them to find the success there. Welcome to our training, Felipe. Good to see you here today as well. So that's the difference there. We're looking at buyers agents, or rather buyers find agents and listing agents find sellers. The buyer controls your agent when they find you, whereas you <clears throat> control the schedule when you represent the seller. And so we're talking about creating a, or a listing oriented schedule. So what is in this listing oriented schedule? What's in it? Well, there's something out there that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to get comfortable doing because we're in a people business. We've got to talk to people. If you're not talking to people, you're not going to be able to find business. That's just a reality. Again, Mike doesn't really, he doesn't uh, beat around the bush anyway. He shoots very straight, direct on. He wants you to be successful. And in order to be successful, sometimes you have to tell the hard truth. So you need to talk to, write this down, you need to talk to 100 people a day, five days a week for three months. Oh my goodness. Stop the paper, <laughs> drop everything, everybody go home. Did he just say 100 people a day for five days a week for three months? That is how Mike Ferry started his business. <clears throat> he talked to 100 people a day, five days a week for three months. And at the end of that, he said he had spoke to the entire time to do the numbers with 6,000 people he spoke to. Oh my goodness, that is so many people. And he felt like he had failed miserably. Why? <clears throat> because he had only taken 36 listings. He said, I talked to 6,000 people and 5,900 or whatever the number was, didn't sign anything with me, how did I fail? And his broker told him, I don't know, but I suggest you should try it again. I mean, think about that. Would you love to take 36 listings in three months? Are you talking to 100 people a day, five days a week? Or are we only talking to people when we message it once or twice on a Facebook, they come into the office on an up desk. The thing is with, with prospecting and talking to people, we are fear of what? We are afraid of what? We are afraid of rejection. Nobody wants to be rejected. You go knock on someone's door. Hello, I'm out of East Century 21. Ferry wants to know, would you like to sell your house? No, boom, get away from me. Oh my gosh, go knock on another door. Hello, I don't need Century 21. Stop by with no, do you want to sell your home? No. Boom. Slams the door in front of me. Oh my gosh. Knock on another one. I don't need Century 21. I want to stop by and ask you, are you interested in selling your home? Yes. Oh, um, well, uh, th does that happen? Maybe that's your reality. It's like, oh my goodness, now what do I say? Because they actually said yes, because the yeses are out there. And so do we know what to say when the answer is yes? We have to know how to respond to those questions. And then the other thing in regards to prospecting is you get a contact, you get a lead, right? And you call the first time and they don't answer the phone. Then you send a text message and they don't respond. Then you shoot an email and they haven't responded yet and now you've given up and you've walked away. I can't tell you how many people, how many clients that I've worked with in the past that have told me they worked with me because I consistently followed up. 
You have to be aggressive. And if, if you're, they say, man, you're really aggressive. And you say, absolutely. And I hope you appreciate that because that's how aggressive I'm going to be in getting your home marketed, getting you top dollar for your home, and sold. Make sense? I hope all that we're saying is making sense for you and your business. So you want to be an aggressive agent when you're out there prospecting. You're, this, this is a business. This is not a hobby. We've got a training coming up later on this week regarding that. And there's a difference between a business and a hobby. A hobby is something that you do for fun, right? When I have time, I like to go to the gym, I play basketball, I go fishing, you know, whatever the case may be. A business is here to make money to provide for your family so that you can participate in your hobbies. The two are not one and the same. Make sense? Absolutely. So something that you need to do, we're talking about these... Um, these prospective sellers, because this is specifically geared toward working with sellers. When you are going to set an appointment to talk to a seller about listing their home before, what's the word we use? Before you actually go on that appointment, you need to pre-qualify that seller. You should not take an appointment until you have pre-qualified that seller. And these are some important questions that you should be asking. Okay? When you talk to them on the phone, don't be afraid of, I don't feel like I'm scripted. You don't have to feel like you're scripted. You can tell them when you call them on the phone. <clears throat> Listen, I'm going to be coming out. We set an appointment for Tuesday at 3 p.m. And there's some important questions that I need to ask you to prepare me to be, to, <clears throat> to prepare me for our conversation on Tuesday at 3 p.m. Do you mind if I ask those questions now? Of course they're going to say yes, we want to ask you questions. So now it doesn't, it doesn't feel scripted to you in your brain. Well, oh my gosh, this is not like a robot. You're not a robot. You're asking questions to get information to be best prepared to service your client. All right? Some of those things that you want to ask is, so when I come out, are you prepared? If what I say makes sense to list your home with me tomorrow at 3 p.m.? They could say yes. They could say maybe. They could say, no, I'm interviewing 12 other agents. Thank you for the information. I appreciate you sharing. That's all you got to do. You want to know what you're walking into. You don't want to show up at their home and be surprised. The way that you will not be surprised is asking good questions. Make sense? <clears throat> of course, you're going over where are they moving? Why are they moving? And then, of course, the important piece is the price. At what price point are you looking to list your home? Because they've already got a price in their head because they've got Zillow. So that gives them an idea for what they maybe they think they can get for their home. They've done some upgrades maybe to their home so they feel that they've spent $50,000 on their kitchen. So they're gonna get $50,000 back even though we know that's not a reality, correct? As agents, we need to know these things. And then of course you let them know. I'm a professional real estate agent. I study home prices every single day. I appreciate you allowing me to be able to help you price your home. Make sense? These are important questions that you need to be asking when you go on, or rather when you prepare to go on your listing appointment. And then another important question is, have you ever considered listing your home yourself for sale by owner? Yes or no? You wanna know, are they going to look and talk to you, see that your commissions are too high, and then decide maybe they're gonna do it on their own, or maybe go with an iBuyer? <clears throat> There's an entire script and we can provide that to you. Just shoot me an email, teambro.gmail.com, and I will provide for you the script that we have from Mike, and I've even tweaked it myself, that works for me, but again, following 99% of how he typed it out, of what those questions are for when you go on, or rather when you pre-qualify a seller for that appointment. You should not be going on an appointment before having that conversation. There's the other important information that you need to know there is how much do they own their home? If you don't know how much they own their home, how can you provide them a good net sheet to what they would, what they would um, take home at the, at the end of that sale? We have to ask these good questions before we go on those listing appointments, okay? This is something that requires practice. We don't want you to go out there and wing it. We are professional agents, professional agents real estate agents. So what we should be doing always and continually is role playing, practicing, 
not only practicing with your other agent that you really know and love in the office, with other agents who may challenge your questions that you're asking, maybe even someone at home, continuing to practice to get different responses from different people to how you can respond. You don't want to show up on the appointment and be surprised, right? And doesn't your seller deserve the best of you? In order to be the best, what do you have to do? The championship of any sport, how do they become champions? They practice and they practice and they practice and then they practice some more. Why do they practice every single day? So that they can achieve the championship. That's the whole reason, to be the best. But if you do not practice, how can you expect to be the best? Good question, right? When you're setting these appointments, these are some goals that you can kind of set forth in your mind. If you have four listing appointments, <clears throat> rather you should take four listings from every six to eight appointments that you make. Four listings from every six to eight appointments that you make. Did you know also, just a little bit of fun facts for you, here in Southern California, we are at a 34% decrease in listings. 34% our inventory is coming down and we as agents have the solution to bring that number up. That's us going out and prospecting and sharing with people that the interest rates are incredibly low. They can still get top dollar for their home because there's nothing on the market. That will increase the inventory, increase your sales, and then at that point, everybody is a lot happier, right? You make more money? Are we here to make more money? Are we just doing real estate because it's fun to learn all of these contracts and to come into the office and go to all these trainings just for the fun of it? Or are you here to make money? You're here to make money. And so being here to make money, you've got to do some things that people who make money do. They show up on time. They practice every day. They are the very best at their craft. And we want you to be the absolute best at your craft as an agent as well. So the next thing is we talked about going out and prospecting. right? We've talked about asking the right questions so that when you go on the appointment, you are prepared. And then once you get to the appointment, what you're going to say at that presentation as well. We are helping you to become a better listing agent from the materials that we learned from Mike Ferry. When you, when you get a listing appointment, you're going to be excited. You should be excited. But in that excitement, remember to maintain your professionalism. And when you get to the house, <clears throat> knock on the door, Hi, it's Adam. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity to list your home. Oh, man, what is that right there? You guys got that painting right there. Where'd you get that from right there? Is this new carpet that you put in? What? No. When you go to a, a listing appointment, you knock on the door and you say, yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity to list your home. I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to earn your business. And then they're going to probably ask you, hey, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for stopping by. Would you mind if I showed you around? Now, the way that Mike tells it is he says, no, I do not want you to show me around. I actually want to see the home through the buyer's lens. So if it's okay, I'll take a quick tour and then I'll meet you in the kitchen. Why? Because when you go through the home with the buyer, they're, or rather the seller, they're probably going, not probably, they're going to try to upselling you on that home. They've already got a price in their mind of how much they think they could ask for the home. And then they're going to point out all these things to you and then inflate possibly the price that you had in your mind already from the market analysis that you completed. So you don't want to actually want them to tour you on the home. You want to take a look around yourself. Okay. When you sit down with them, you let them know that there's some important questions that you need to ask. And then you go over those questions there in regards to whether or not they've done any upgrades to the property. If that's something that hasn't already been covered in your pre-qualifying of the home. You need to have your questions written down. If there's other things that you, that you need to know about the home that you didn't cover in the pre-listing qualification, write them down. It is okay to write down questions. It shows that you have prepared for this appointment. Yes? And it shows your professionalism to your client as well as my agent is thinking. 
They are working. They are not here just showing up and you know what, I got, um, I don't know, where did I do it? Uh, I'm kind of confused. Uh, that's not going to work. When you come into your profession, you're dressed professionally, you're, you're talking like you understand contracts and selling homes, you're, that is going to communicate confidence to your client and they are going to be confident in you. Be confident, you can do this, you will be successful in real estate if you take these simple principles and apply them to your business, okay? Now we've got there, we've had the conversation, we've asked all the right questions, and we have taken the listing appointment, all right? And we've taken the listing, sorry, I should say. This is great. Now, when you are out prospecting, we're just gonna back up a little bit. When you are out prospecting, maybe that prospecting was um, calling for business. And so you're in the office and you're calling for business, right? That is one method of prospecting. Another point that the Mike brings out is that you should have five to seven. Again, I'll say it, five to seven different methods of prospecting. This is the hard part because we have a comfort zone that we tend to stay in. He says, if you... my notes real quick. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, do it. Whether you like it or not, do it. What does your current prospecting look like? Are you knocking on doors? Are you calling for business from a phone in your office? Are you working your sphere of influence? Are you working the up desk? Are you doing open houses? Are you doing community events? What are you doing that is prospecting for your business? You should have, again, he says, five to seven methods of prospecting. We are literally looking at right now a crisis in America, right? People are keeping their distance. They're calling it social distancing. So if my primary method of prospecting <clears throat> was open houses and door knocking, I am in a serious pinch right now because I, people don't want you knocking on their doors right now if they don't know you. And they're probably not going to open houses as buyers and the sellers don't want anyone in their home. So all of your prospecting has dried up if you only had those two different veins for prospecting. Whereas if you had your sphere of influence through social media that you were working, you're calling for business on the phone, you had a system in place for that, now you can continue to thrive in business because you have planned appropriately multiple different types of prospecting. So think about that for your business and have five to seven different methods of prospecting and you should be prospecting for three hours a day. How many hours a day? Three hours a day. These are some of the questions that you're asking uh, when, you, when you talk to someone for prospecting. You don't want them to be yes or no questions. You want open-ended questions so that you can get information to continue a conversation. If I was to call you and say, hi, my name is Adavi, do you want to sell your home? Simple response. No, I don't want to sell my home. Asking the same question in a different manner would be, I was wondering, when do you plan on moving? Is that a yes or no answer? Absolutely not. When do you plan on moving? Well, uh, we weren't really planning on moving anytime soon. Okay. Well, how long have you lived here? Yes or no answer? No. They're going to get, well, we've lived here about two or three, about two and a half years, so on and so forth. So where did you move from? Oh, well, we actually moved from, from the Bay Area. We came down here for my, for my husband's job. Okay. Fantastic. If you were to move, where would you move to? Oh, well, you know, we actually really love San Diego and you're here in Riverside County and San Diego would be great. Okay, how soon would that be for you to make that move? Well, you know, believe it or not, my husband is going to be retiring this summer. And so we're thinking about maybe we're going to do it this summer. Wow. Now, if you had came in and asked them, rather, if they wanted to sell their home, the most likely answer would have been no. But as you had this conversation and you built this rapport with this particular 
potential client, now you have the opportunity to earn their business because you're prospecting, you are asking great questions and getting good information to be able to service a need. All right? So keep that in mind when you're out prospecting, five to seven different methods of prospecting, three hours a day, and asking those critical questions, non, <clears throat> rather open-ended questions, not yes or no questions. <clears throat> The next point that he brings out in regards to the listing agent and the listing schedule of a listing agent is committing to some standards. Now, he shared a wonderful story. <clears throat> I probably should have brought some water in here today. And there's no Melissa to bring me water, so I'm just going to have to uh, make it work. <clears throat> but anyways, he tells the story of an agent who's very successful making a million dollars a year down in uh, Fort Myers, Florida. Now, this agent was called him up and he talked to him. He's doing the things that Mike is telling him to do. And he says, you know what? I'm burnt out. What do you mean you're burnt out? Why are you burnt out? <clears throat> I'm burnt out because, these are the notes that I wrote down here. He said he was going on 34 to 38 listing appointments every single month, but he was only taking 16 to 18 listings. And he was like, this is just ridiculous. And so he says, you know what? We've got to set some listing standards. Awesome. Wow, this is really cool. I love this office. Thank you, Thanks, Amber. Chris. Right on. <laughs> That is a huge lifesaver. You have no idea. Hmm. Lifesaver. Thank you, Amber. Woo! I can finish our training now. <clears throat> so he was saying that we needed to create some listing standards for the listings that he was taking. Now, he's already pre-qualifying these sellers, but there were some standards that were missing, and I want you to implement these into your business as well as a listing agent. The first one that he said you're going to implement is you can't take a listing for anything less than six months. Anything less than six months. The agent was like, well, you don't believe it. These agents are taking listings for a week, for a day, and he's like, doesn't matter. We will not take any less listings for less than six months. Standard number one. Standard number two for your listing is full commission. What do you think or what is your full commission? Is it 5%, 2 and a half, 2 and a half? Is it 6%, 3 and 3? Is it, I don't know, 6 and a half, 3 and a half for you, 3 for the other side, 7? What is it? Whatever that is, commit to that full listing commission and don't deviate in any way. Point number three to commit to your listing standard is you cannot list over 5% of whatever your market analysis is. No more than 5%. You got a $300,000 home and they're asking $375,000. They're not willing to budge. Walk away. The professional walks away. All right? And then again, number uh, point number four, 100% pre qualify the sellers before you take the appointment. <clears throat> so let's go back to the same agent four months later. <clears throat> Same agent, four months later, he says, hey, how you doing? Mike calls him, hey, how you doing? He says, I love the business. Wow, what a drastic change. What has happened? He says, I'm going on 22, 23 listing appointments every single month. Fantastic. And he's still taking 17 to 18 listings. Wow, incredible. He went from a 40% ratio uh, appointments to, to closings to a 90% ratio simply by having listing standards in place that he followed. We as agents have to have standards in place that we follow for our business. Without those standards, you will burn out, you won't want to continue in the business, and you'll be looking for something else, your plan B. Don't have a plan A, or rather a plan B, have a plan A with standards in place that you follow so you don't burn out. You want to be in control of your business. Now there's a couple things that can happen when you're going on these listing um, presentations and you're, and you're working with these potential listings. You can be, and there's a couple things that he noted and I want to share these with you. You could be out bonded, meaning that the other agent could bond better with that potential seller. That could happen. You could be out marketing. Are there those who have $20,000 a month to spend on marketing and you don't? Yes, you could be out marketing. 
Could you be out commissioned? Is there another agent willing to do it for less? Yes, that is possible. You could be outpriced. But one thing you should never be out is don't be out presented. You control the quality of your presentation. You control the quality of your presentation. When I go to a listing appointment, I tell every agent out there, you know what? I'm not worried about this. I've got it. I don't believe that there's another agent that has a better listing presentation than I do. And when I go, I'm dressed professionally, like I'm dressed right now. I've, got, I've done all of my homework. I've asked all of my questions when I get there. So I feel very strongly when I sit down at the table with that client that I'm going to walk away with that listing. What? And you should be doing the same. I want you guys to be absolutely 100% prepared. Don't be out presented. There's no reason for it because that is 100% in your control. Again, Mike doesn't sugarcoat any of this and I, I'm trying to be as nice as I can, but this is the way that he shoots it straight. And those that work with Mike and they follow his advice and his expertise are ma massively successful agents and you can and will be the same by simply following these same practices in your real estate career. The next point that Mike made was, you will either be an employer or an employee. <clears throat> Who typically, or all the time, makes more money in a business? The employer or the employee? We all know that it's the employer. The employer makes more money than the employee. So an employer is a listing agent. An employee is a buyer's agent. Because if you have a listing and the buyer should walk, you are still employed as the listing agent. Does that make sense? We want to be employers and not employees. What happens too often for, for many agents is we did the prospecting, right? We did the prequal questionnaire. We took the appointment and we got the listing. And then we went to do something that Mike says we need to stop. Two words is quit celebrating. Woo hoo hoo, I got a listing all oh, yeah, day and you're talking about it all day in the office. What is your job? Your job is to list property. All right? So if it's your job to list property, why are you celebrating? When you go to Stater Brothers to buy groceries and the cashier checks you out at the close of that transaction, woohoo, yeah, I checked out another customer. No, it's scan, 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 put the card in, there's your receipt next, scan, 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 put the card in, there's your receipt, scan, 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 so on and so forth. You and I, as agents don't need to go around celebrating. It is our job to come to work and to take listings. And when you stop and celebrate, you lose a critical piece of your business. Can anyone guess what that critical piece is? Starts with the letter M and it's called momentum. Whenever the train stops, it loses momentum. And it takes a lot of energy to get that momentum going again. So don't stop and celebrate. Take the listing, drive to the office. Maybe you can celebrate. That's the only place is while you're driving back to the office as you continue to work and get the job done. There's no, yes, we should be happy that we're getting business, but that's what we're here to do is to get business. Get the celebrating out of your mind. This is the way that Mike shows it. Again, I can't sugarcoat this. These are my notes from Mike and this is what he's done and this is how they have found success with those that they coach. Next to the last point, we've got uh, two more points we're going to finish up uh, that we're talking about uh, being a listing agent. And the next point is know your numbers. Know your numbers. <clears throat> if you go knock on 100 doors, do you know how many people on average you're going to talk to? And then if you know on average how many people that you're going to talk to, <clears throat> how many of those people you're going to be able to set an appointment with? And then of those people that you set an appointment with, do you know how many of those you're actually going to be able to close with business on? If you do not, then there's a problem with your business and we need to go back 
to the drawing board. We'll be teaching a class in regards to knowing your numbers coming up here on Thursday. And I want you, if you're not, if you're watching now, if you haven't um, already marked on your calendar, be there for that class. We want to make sure that we can break down for you so you can see what's taking place in your business. Because again, as a hobby, I play basketball on Tuesday, sometimes Thursdays, right? That's a hobby, right? I go to work Monday through Friday. And this is what I do during those hours, Monday through Friday, because when you know your numbers, you can predict your business. Do you want to be able to say, I know that every month I'll be able to make $20,000, $50,000, $100,000? You'll be able to do that by knowing your numbers. A good business owner knows their numbers. They need to know why, what's my order? What does it cost me to operate this business versus what I'm making? Because if my cost exceeds what I'm making, I'm bankrupt and going out of business. The only way to know what's gonna happen is to again, know those numbers and to track everything that you're doing. Again, this is not a hobby. This is a what? This is a business. <clears throat> Last point that Mike brought up was start every day at zero. When you come to work, you have to have the mindset that I have no listings, I have no leads, I have no prospects, I have no money in the bank. You come to work with that type of mindset and that will motivate you to get to work because there's a problem that success breeds or builds, and that's complacency. Yes? I'm doing fantastic in my business. I got money in the bank. I think I'm going to take a day or two off, right? Is that how businesses operate? That's not how successful businesses operate. And if you want to be successful, we have to start each and every day at zero. Zero is where you start. You come to work and you know, I have to generate business so that I can stay in business. There were four words that Mike talked about in the close of his, his talk with us there in LA, and I want to share those four words with you today. The first word that he mentioned was mindset. What's going on in your head? Mindset being, again, the canned presentation that people don't want to learn, right? But you know what are canned presentations? Comb in your hair. You do that every day. You don't even need to think about it. Ladies, when you put on makeup, you don't need to think about that. You just put that on, right? <clears throat> when I tie this tie, I don't have to think about it. I just do what I do. It's a canned presentation, right? When someone's cooking, they don't go to the, the, the refrigerator, they just take the eggs out, they just chuck them at the daggone wall, and maybe they're gonna land in the pan and become fried eggs. Not at all, right? It's a, can, it's a recipe that you follow. You put the ingredients in, they become uh, a cake or a pie or whatever it is that you're gonna make, because there's a recipe that you're following and that become, that is, that is your mindset. So you have to have the right mindset in business, right? And it's, and it's good to have those can presentations in your mind of how you're going to operate. You don't need to think about it, it's just autopilot. That's the way that you're gonna be best successful. The next thing that he mentioned was skills. Sellers want the best of the best. Ask yourself this question. Would you be okay with an unskilled pilot flying your plane? An unskilled surgeon doing open heart surgery on you or someone that you love? Maybe an unskilled attorney defending you in court? Absolutely not. Why would a seller want an unskilled agent representing them in the the buying or selling, when this term we're talking about the selling, the selling of their home, which is quite possibly the largest asset that they've ever owned. Think about that. So you have to be skilled as an agent. Activities is the next word. He said mindset. Activities. Activities define levels of success. If you show up at 10 a.m. in the morning, here at the office, rolling in at 10 o'clock, ooh, what's going on, 10.30 for the training? He said his broker would assume, he said, when you come in, I assume you've been out prospecting for the last two and a half hours. Because who shows up to work at 10 o'clock in the morning? The work they started a couple of hours earlier, so you have no chance of being successful with those type of activities. 
Did you know the average agent, this is crazy, the average agent spends one hour and 48 minutes on Facebook a day. One hour and 48 minutes. On, now, if you're watching this live presentation, this is a great way to spend your time on Facebook. But if you're scrolling, looking at posts, is that generating business for you? Is that helping you become a better agent? Not at all. So what are your activities in your day? And then last but not least was action. When you get home at the end of your day, are you tired? Do you feel absolutely exhausted? My goodness, I can't wait to be able to just eat my dinner, throw my feet up for a minute, take a load off, get a good night's rest so I can start again tomorrow. If you're not tired at the end of the day, I dare to say you're not working hard enough. Again, folks, I know this can be a little bit brash, but this is the way that Mike shares it. And so I can't water this down. I've got to give it to you direct because I found all of this to be just absolutely fundamental for our business. Those four words that you want to remember that Mike shared with us was mindset, skill, activities, and action. We're talking about you all becoming very successful listing agents. To become successful listing agents, we have to separate ourselves from the buyers out there. We've got to be able to have a different skill than what is needed for representing buyers. We need to commit to a 20, rather the 18 to 24 month system in becoming a stronger agent and creating a listing schedule oriented for that of sellers working weekdays and not weekends. What does that schedule consist of? We talked about that, talking to 100 people a day, five days a week, three times, rather for three months, doing the follow-up that's required to confirm those appointments and take those listings. <clears throat> we have to define what we're going to say at our listing presentations, know the right questions to ask. Number, <clears throat> the next point that we pointed out here was five to seven different methods of prospecting. What are those methods of prospecting that you have currently working and what do you need to add to it? Committing to some listing standards. We've gone over some listing standards that you can uh, implement into your business. I want to just go over those again with you because these are critical to not waste your time and get you burnt out. Don't take a listing for less than six months. Get a paid full commission and don't over don't overlist more than 5% of what your CMA has there. And of course, pre-qual all of your sellers before you take the appointment. <clears throat> Know the difference between being an employer and an employee. Be an employer as a listing agent. Stop celebrating. Get out there, get the work done, and you will find success. Hugely important, track your numbers. What are you doing every day? How can you be able to know what the outcome gonna be from the work that was put in? Start every day at zero. I hope you found value in what we took away from our uh, coaching session there with Mike Ferry. Thanks for joining us for our training today. I know that the world's kind of in like a frenzy right now. Continue to prospect every single day, work hard, and be consistent. In doing those three things, you will continue to find success in real estate no matter what's going on in our world today so that you can provide for you and your family. We're always here to answer any questions that you have. Feel free to give me a call. You guys have got my cell phone number. Shoot me an email if there's any questions you have regarding our training. This is where we are going to differentiate ourselves from the rest of the agents that are out there. We are going to be the most equipped agents in the Valley here in Temecula and Lake Elsinore. Take care, guys. Be safe. Talk to you soon.